Welcome to the 27th behind the screen stream. Um, some new things to note today. I'm an affiliate. Woo, go me. It took 27 weeks um, of, you know, actual dedication. Uh, so that's a thing. It's not showing up at the top of the chat box, but I don't know if the cheerleader board will show up in that chat box, but that's a thing that happened yesterday. So that's cool. Thank you. Um, I'm currently waiting for my emote to be approved. Yeah, that's going to take a while. So that's a cool thing. That's a bit of bookkeeping taken care of. So um, you can now sub to the stream if you really want to. Um, I would say, obviously, don't do it straight away. Stick around, watch the content for a bit, see if it's what you enjoy. Um, but there we go. And then this is going to be, as the title suggests, another of the workshop streams because I can't really do much prep tonight for tonight's game because one, my partner is in the room next to me because she's got the week off because it's she needs a holiday. And um, we're having an atypical session today where I'm going to be running them through a haunted house using Betrayal at House on the Hill with some additional rules and um, I don't really need to sort those out because I've got those sorted out. The only prep I really need to do is check some room, check what rooms um, are actually in the game and I found that list so I can do that in real, real quick uh, when it becomes relevant. Um, so, yes, so we're building. Before that, recap. So, um, last session nothing much happened. I say nothing much happened. A lot of development happened in terms of character but nothing much in terms of you know, progression of the main story. But as I keep saying, there's not really a main story. It's all about character-driven storyline anyway. So there we go. So um, we left off with Erin in, a, in, the, in the Temple of the Chorus, having been shown the Waystone, where the soul of his dead um, lover was is kind of... It, Imprisoned is the wrong word, but preserved, I guess. Uh, he had a discussion. It was very emotional. It was very important to me to treat it with emotional weight. And um, the player came out to me afterwards and said that he enjoyed how I handled it. So that was good. That was a win. Um, he then, there was a brief showdown with um, the priestess of the temple, who the party know to be a, some of the party know to be an Asimar. And there was some discussion there about how to go about freeing Paylor, the Asimov, kind of the boss of the Asimov's boss, so to speak. Um, and then kind of we were chopping between that scene with Erin and Storm Chaser and, and whatnot, and um, Corvo and Apollo, who went to Apollo's safe house and did some had some conversations there about what they wanted to do going forwards. And then everyone kind of really just ended up back at Apollo's um, safe house where Erin and Luth, the party fighter, ended up slogging it out just as an emotional release thing for Erin. And um, really, that was it. It was a really good development session. But as I say, not much happened in terms of plot progression, which was fine by me. Uh, and then today's session, as I've explained, we'll be doing some Betrayal House on the Hill because they want to go back to a house that they've been to before to find more information about the person who owned it because he was like the head cultist of a cult and behind the recent coup in the city and they want to find out more about that. So uh, here's where the formatting on the re recap goes weird and I have to keep trying to find something that I'm happy with. Uh, the party was a... Personal. That's not how you spell that word at all. Revelations and. Uh, organized planning. Or even better, organized their next. plan their next steps. There we go. That's the better word. So there we go. That's the recap. That is 
not central. Kind of have to eyeball it. That looks central to me. So without that, that all out of the way. Oh, hey, cool. Now it breaks my chat room into me, VIPs, and users. Uh, yes, so with all that out of the way. So previously, in this world building thing, um, I have, I say I, chat and I have created a pantheon of deities, which I should probably open that actually. Um, my intention, by the way, for people who are unsure, is after all this is done, compile it all into one decent document and then uh, share that so that people can make use of it as they will through my website. So this is the list of deities. Interesting how some of it is treated as a subtitle and some of it isn't. Sorry, it's a title and some of it isn't. Uh, so that's that. Put that there. Uh, deities. Uh, and then created some world events. Ta-da! Based on four civilizations, three of whom worshipped these deities, one of whom didn't, as you can see on screen. And then uh, kind of made, it, made some ideas about the general trend of that civilization, how long it ruled for, all this was randomly generated, and then how many major events happened during that civilization's period in power. I still haven't quite decided if this is a kind of a world thing or just a continent thing. Empires could obviously be both, uh, but I like empires give empire in air quotes. Um, large civilizations make it easy to create history for an air, for for a world uh, because they change so much by their very presence of being. Uh, so. Obviously, there are the four, but rather than moving on to Civilization 2 today, I thought we'd go to Civilization 1, nail down some of the details of that one so that Civilization 2 onwards can do callbacks to it. If at any point you have questions, want me to repeat anything, or have any ideas, please do let me know. So, Civilization 1 is called The Architects for 1530 years, and they got to medieval. Um, like, technology hey that's fine warlocks blast things real good <laughs> um, and if you say that a warlock shouldn't be a blaster then really that's a contentious opinion although they do make quite good utility casters as well but that's by the by uh, yeah so this is all just collaborative creation dinosaur war because you've not really seen one of these streams before and I don't know who may not have seen one of these streams before. It is entirely driven by our interactions, and we make this world together. And hopefully it will be way better and cooler than anything I could possibly imagine. So the first thing I need to do, I realized, is determine a principal race for the people in power. Um, so I have, thanks to someone on Reddit, uh, Mr. Peach32, a table... It's actually a reincarnation table for um, the reincarnation spell, updated to fit with Sorry, I just noticed in Streamlabs, apparently I have subscribed to my own channel as a tier 3 subscriber. There we go. Anyway, uh, to fit with the player options from Player Handbook, Volo's Guide, through to Mordekainen's. Uh, so it is weighted towards the reincarnate table. So we will see what I get. And I hope it's a race that I know about. But my dice are in the wrong place. It's horrible. How on earth did that happen? Anyway, so D100 roll. That's true. That's true. 12. That is a human, I believe. It is. It is. So, uh, principal race, human. Secondary race, halfling. Cool. 
technically start halfling. Uh, if I make these bold so I remember they're important. And for the lols, let's just see what government types the DMG has. Although it's a meritocratic society, so obviously quote unquote democratic is the ideal. Now I have to figure out where that table went. Uh, one of these days, I do want to, because the DMG has so many tables about how to create an adventure and the goals of the adventure and how you start the adventure. Um, so I do want to do a random, just roll completely random for a one shot or a short campaign. Anyway, that's by the by. If anyone's ever done that, please do tell. let me know how it turned out for you. Uh, this is the wrong way, I believe. Now I'm heading into the random encounters tables. Whoops. That was the wrong direction entirely. Oh, <laughs> here it is. Uh, but thought there was a table on. Government somewhere. Or governance, maybe. Maybe I'm not going far enough back. Forms of government, here we are. I hadn't gone far enough back. Feudalism. Right, so I'm assuming that's just what I believe to be medieval governance anyway, but it's worth checking. Uh, more at Wikipedia. Yes, holding of land. Okay, I can make that work in terms of a meritocratic society. Uh, so, don't bolt off. We have... Uh, doo -doo -doo. Philosopher Lords hold land. Protect and better the lives of their subjects. Can be challenged in debate slash combat um, for their holdings. Which would then kind of, I guess, lead, lead into the Piskeaton problem, Piskeaton uprising, etc., etc., that you can see here. Uh, so, the idea here isn't to create an exhaustive timeline, it is to create um, like a cohesive snapshot of the world around these major events. So with these ideas, that it is a principally human with a large like halfling population um, society ruled by philosopher lords, uh, I guess how would that tie into the prediction of, of religious extremism? And how would that kind of manifest? Who would, who would have that prediction of its own? In power, it would definitely make a, a might makes right society, yes. Um, so, Idion, the Dancing Light, um, or is, where's the tab, is uh, someone who, here we go, you do the right thing no matter the result. So, uh, it might actually be, be worth noting, uh, do, do, do. 
outcomes approved by judiciary slash tribunal. So like you can challenge someone and if you win dishonestly, you are slapped down. Um, if it is dis decided that uh, oh, actually. So maybe, maybe in order to initiate this duel of wits or blades, you have to prove, make your case for it to prove that um, this is right for this, that you would be a better person to to ha have these holdings than um, the person who currently has them. Uh, tying could be uh, tying in with this thing about doing the right thing no matter the result so everyone could say that um, that is a cool idea uh, the current thing is that uh, demons arrive although I didn't actually make a note of that how that happened here which is strange. Hmm. Thought I had done that, or I think it's something else. Ah, here we go. Here we go, the Empire Spanning Ritual. So that would work, actually. Uh, so, kind of leave a few lines to fill in general time period information. So, uh, religious orders unite in a, like a theocratic, oh, I guess in a push for Theocratic rule leading to the um, ritual which goes awry and brings about the end of the age. Arge. Uh, Do this through sponsoring. I put it in air quotes because it might be not entirely legit. Dualists. Uh, whether divinely aided. So paladins, clerics, that kind of thing. Or not. But that's, that's a cool way of doing it. That's a cool way of handling it. So, uh, right. So we've got 1530. Let's get some random de numbers generated. Where's my, there's that window. Uh, min, and then max 1530, 3, 3, 1026. Should really have put these up here, I suppose. I don't know why I got rid of the revolt, but there we go. So, uh, this prediction. So, 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 are we thinking? Does it make sense to you folk that the prediction would be a premonition, sorry, a prophecy of, about the the clerics um, performing the coup to seize control of, of the uh, empire? This whole thing, um, I believe I mentioned, kind of gave me, just gives me It feels a bit like the Tau in Warhammer 40,000 who are essentially space communists who conquer people for the greater good. Um, 
So I, I, that's that's definitely what I'm feeling here. Like they they they, ex, they expand their society to bring about the greater good to everyone, in air quotes, because the greater good is obviously not the same for everyone. Uh, so. I mean, looking at the, 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 the Glorious People's Revolution of Recognition, or the Piscitan problem, it could be that this is seen, prophesized, whatever, by, predicted by someone high up, and then they kind of crack down on religion. On, on kind of religious officers holding too much power um, in order to prevent the amount of destruction maybe this is prophecy they used to cement and expand their power as they are the best equipped to defeat them a self-fulfilling prophecy I like it I like that very much so uh, someone in power has a vision of the end of the age with a whole say multicolored fire burning the empire to the ground. I also don't have names for these civilizations yet beyond those which later civilizations know them. So these people wouldn't have called themselves the architects. They would have called themselves something else. Uh, burning the empire to the ground. Uh, if we add in here, surrounded by signs Holy to Idion and Notrix. As these are all just very note, this is a very noty way of writing things. Uh, as a result, uh, overtly religious people for now are dissuaded from pursuing political power and then this leads down through to uh, the end of the era actually this leaves 27 years between the uprising and ah no that works that works Theocratic rule. In the wake of the Piscitan problem. So, um, and then 1200 years later the lashback the the feedback of this is that the re religious orders do decide that kind of in the wake of this people's rebellion the traditional systems aren't working so we should have the power so they take the power and then end the age by accidentally summoning demons which is cool obviously not for them but there we go this i can just put down here and delete and then delete this there we go so discovery you don't really expand or invent a plant so discovery of a plant oops Draw some kind of link consciousness possibly used as the final ritual. Of the so uh, this I mentioned last time I was on this topic that 
there's a game called Unity. It's a uh, a role playing game where one of the races, in terms of of like fantasy archetypes, are psychic elves who used to have this collective consciousness, and as part of their fall, kind of lost the collective consciousness aspect to their abilities and kind of are always trying to make that psychic connection again. So I thought maybe this plant could could be something that stimulates a psychic connection between the the people who um, consume it, which would also tie in with the idea that... Uh, where is it? Where is it? Here we go. Uh, Notrix will eventually cast a second spell to link everyone into a collective consciousness. And obviously, if you're in a civilization that believes in the greater good... Um, a collective consciousness is the greatest good, I guess. So that's a that's something maybe to think about. I don't know what that would if that would work especially well or not. Um, sorry, I need to. Sorry about that. Uh, maybe if they fuse a crown, maybe it's branches to their schools that links them up. Right, I'm going to run with that. Possibly not in the way that you are thinking. So. Uh, high priest of Notrix and Idione uh, lead capital letters TM uh, lead the ritual and a random fantasy plant name um, that would have this effect Anima rose um, stems around a crown. Uh, the idea is that the thorns, the thrones, piercing their flesh will allow them to more fully connect with fake Latin is the best Latin um, oh oh uh, there we go fake Latin uh, do, do, do with the one of my friends would hate us for doing this but there we go uh, connect with the collective unconsciousness, not psychic. Uh, unconscious. I hate typing on stream; it puts me under so much pressure. Ah! Uh, collect with this to connect with the collective unconsciousness, but their blood mixing with the magic um, turns it into a. Sacrifice slash blood magic spell, which corrupts the ritual and summons the demons. I think that sounds cool. Obviously, your mileage may vary. Uh, do, 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 do. Does Google Translate have a Latin option? I'll be surprised if it doesn't. But there we go. Yeah, sure. Uh, is that a happy medium? I realize I could just make the text bigger as well, but... Uh, 
I could also... I mean, I could make... Because obviously there's a lot of blank space here. And on the other side for that matter. Um, oh, you can't see my cursor. That's weird. Oh, there's a lot of blank space here and here. I could, I could maybe make just the whole window a bit bigger and put the chat box here, if you'd prefer. Or if this is fine, that's, that's, that's perfectly all right. It does have a Latin option. Excellent. Okay, sure. There we go. Uh, where did it go? Spiner, which is Thorn. It might be my stream, but I want it to be accessible and inclusive um, to people with a variety of... Like you, if you have poor reading eyesight or dyslexics, you might struggle to read the tiny text. So I, I don't mind. I'm always open to um, suggestions on how I can improve the experience for my viewers. Which is why I struggled so much with Dragon Age and moving the, the webcam around so I could fit the subtitles on the screen properly. But if this is fine be for you, that's fine for me. Uh, Cyborg Espina. The Anima Rose. Discovery of the Anima Rose by, and then that's less than ideal to have that open there. Uh, well, I suppose uh, human. Oh, well, if it's human. Uh, Alberta's Darwin. Oh, wait, no, no. Oh. Uh, the P monk. Uh, who, the, one sec. Sorry, my my memory is, is failing me. Um, Mendel, there we go. Uh, so he was a monk who grew peas and kind of experiment, experimented with genetics. Which is cool, bit of trivia. Hopefully teaching people things they might not know. Try and make at least me more interesting. Uh, discover the Anima Rose. Uh, a plant which, when imbibed as a tea, links a person to the collective unconsciousness, as hypothesized by Carl Jung. Um, who never actually came to Liverpool, which is where I live, but we have a a um, pond, I guess, a pool. That's the one, uh, and like the main touristy centre of the city centre, that is inspired by him. So that's cool. Anywho, a plant which, when imbibed as a tea, links a person to the collective unconsciousness, possibly used as part of the final ritual of the civilization. Definitely used in the light of that great suggestion. Oh wait, no, it's collective unconscious. Whoops. There we go. I'll tell you what, just the pressure of people. Ah, my brain just goes completely out the window. The 
So if it's a T, but then that wouldn't answer this question. That would have to be a contact thing. Okay, so uh, Bows does a T links the person to the collective unconscious. Or when held produces a mild psychic effect. So if they're drinking the tea and also piercing their skin with the thorns to link more fully with it, then blood, blood magic, sacrifice, demons, ah, the worst thing to summon. So, I guess now it's just to go into more detail about each of these events and the society in general. The idea is to have as much detail as an archaeologist would be able to kind of uncover, so to speak, even for the most recent, like, current civilization um so that if people do want to use it for their own games there's not there's enough detail to provide a history and a flavor of the culture but there's not too much that it's overwhelming or that they've got to remember everything or like i feel when i run uh settings that aren't my own that i have to stick to kind of what's written and i know that i don't i know that i can change it all i want but that my initial thought is what if I get it wrong? This someone's put time and effort into making this, so I generally, like with my own, um, the word I use in my home game, I don't make detailed notes about it. I have just one or two facts, because quite apart from anything else, the players will never read the entire history that you that you write. So don't, unless you like doing that kind of thing. Obviously, um, I generally more folk lean down on. As you can see, just the big, big events and um, winging it from there. So. How to turn all these notes into something useful. I mean, they're useful right now. Uh, in my world... Um, so in, in the world that I have in my homebrew game in, uh, Planar, um, the only psychic character we've had was touched by a creature from the Far Realm. And um, kind of, the, I think the Gith, traditionally, uh, they're actually a, an official race. Um, they, I think just, well, one, they're Planar beings, but two, they just train and develop psychic abilities the Illithid are planar, I believe. Could be wrong about that in the mo in the most recent editions. Um, sorry, get their psychic abilities from planar beings. Uh, but I, I, it depends entirely on kind of the feel at the time. So if I were doing a like a modern day game, I'd be more inclined to maybe do genetics. And have more of like an X Men situation where people who manifest like where psychic powers are possible, but not necessarily um, common. That's the word I was looking for. But right now, as it stands, play, the psychic powers are playing on definitely. Hope that answered your question. Anyway, so uh, do, 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 I could probably. So, if I have this summary at the top of the civilization, the architects worshipped Idion and worked towards creating a utopian, meritocratic society to better everyone. Uh, You know what, let's just get rid of the italics, it's bothering me. 
Work towards creating a utopian meritocratic society to better everyone. Uh, do, do, do. Whether the subject wanted it or not. To aid them in this. They laid the foundation for many cities and roads across a course. Across wide swaths of land in what became known as um, the People's Empire. Uh, primarily a human civilization, although it is notable that many stout halflings reached positions of power and influence. The architects were Uh, the first civilization to invent such things as the printing press. Uh, what else was invented in the medieval period? Let us see. Greek fire. Bombards. Uh, the printing press. The mechanical clock. And the... We'll go with vertical windmill. Vertical windmill. Uh, do, 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 do. Driven to uncover knowledge granted to them or oh, granted to intelligent life because humankind doesn't make sense when there are other races. Uh, Bionotrix. The architects believed they could restore their findings through a grand ritual which they called I did mean there, thank you very much. Uh, which they called the recollection. Uh, the civilization no. This ritual would prove to be their undoing when The priests performing it at site, size, sites of power all over the empire I don't want to just say accidentally summon demons but they accidentally summon demons Unknowingly corrupted the spell. Uh, unknowingly nope. 
corrupted the magic and opened gateways through the abyss, allowing demons entry to uh, or even better, allowing demons to overrun overrun. The Empire. Space. Space. Just so there's some visible indentation happening right there. Hope that all makes sense so far. So I don't need to know that anymore. Uh, that's also not how you spell that word. In the slightest. Uh, architect society was predicated on the many uh, not knowing being able to ascertain the best course of action as a result a governing body of Philosopher Lords, known as XXXX. If anyone thinks of a good title, please do let me know. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Was formed to both uh, govern the provinces, counties, and holdings. Within the empire's empire, within the empire's boundaries, there needs to be an apostrophe there, and to uh, conduct the business of running the empire. Any ex. XXXX could be challenged. I realize that me typing isn't obviously the most entertaining thing, um, which is why I always encourage ideas to be thrown at me. For their seat, but the challenge had to be approved by the YYYY. And all outcomes were ratified by the same body. So that's that information. Uh, just ignore these for now and go down to here. Actually, if I move these up, and then kind of a, have an important dates section. Important dates. B U. That works. Because there could always be um, like a tiered ranking structure to that body anyway. So just because you have that title 
doesn't mean that you are high ranking within it. And it does fit with their purpose. So I like it. Thank you. Uh, I guess this information should be up here. So drop it there for now. as a separate paragraph uh, whilst the people's empire was religiously motivated it was frowned upon for a religious figure to join The guiding minds. Yeah, that probably doesn't need to be capitalized actually. Where is it? Uh, there. Uh, as a result of a prophecy made early on in the Empire's timeline. However, in the wake of the Piskeaton uprisings and the popular rebellion which followed, did I? Nine years is still enough time. I thought it was a nine year thing. Uh, balance of power shifted as the clergy convinced the guide the gooding the gooding minds uh, the guiding minds that their divinely ordained knowledge would prevent such things from happening again. Uh, divine ordained knowledge and connection to the people of the empire. I think small e works there. Again. Uh, so that's Uh, I don't, so that's that taken care of. Look at the Piscuitan uprisings and the popular rebellion which followed. The balance of power shifted as the clergy commits the guiding minds that they are divinely ordained knowledge and connection to the people of the empire would prevent such things from happening again. Uh, so nine years takes it to 35. So what followed was nearly a decade and a half of um, nobles chosen by the Church of Recollection, sending rapidly to high authority within the guiding mind and spreading the influence of the church. Uh, this would prove to be the 
undoing of the people's empire as the, huh, I guess, extreme measures taken by the church during the ritual of recollection. The wearing of crowns made of anima rose to better link the clergy and the collective unconscious. Would in advert. That still looks wrong. Tent, inadvertently. I don't know why I thought it was a D. As I say, my brain goes completely out, out of the window when I'm typing on stream. Uh, would inadvertently transform the ritual into a blood magic spell. And... Tear the borders of prime material plane and the abyss, allowing an army of demons to burn the people's empire to ash. I think that makes sense. Uh, do, do, do. I think that make, all makes sense. So, uh, the architects worshipped Idion and worked towards... This is just to make sure it reads well. The architects worshipped Idion and worked towards creating a utopian meritocratic society to better everyone, whether the subjects wanted it or not. To aid them in this, comma... They laid the foundation for many cities and roads across wide swaths of land in what became known as the People's Empire. Primarily a human civilization, although it is notable that many stout halflings reached positions of power and influence, the architects were the first civilization to invent such things as the printing press, the mechanical clock, and the vertical windmill, which are all apparently 12th century technology. Driven to uncover knowledge, granted to... In well, the printing press maybe not, but the... Um oh. Sorry, like 13th, 14th century technology. Anyway, driven to uncover knowledge granted to intelligent life by Notric, the architects believed they could restore their findings through a grand ritual which they called oh, restore their findings to her. Through a grand ritual which they called the Recollection. Whilst the people's empire was religiously motivated, it was frowned upon for a religious figure to join the guiding minds as a result of a prophecy made early on in the empire's timeline. However, in the wake of the Piskeaton uprisings and the popular rebellion which followed, the balance of power shifted as the spaceport does not do anything. That is strange. That's why it's not doing anything. Uh, the balance of power shifted as the clergy convinced the guiding minds that their divinely ordained knowledge and connection to the people of the empire would prevent such things from happening again. What followed was nearly a decade of and a half of nobles chosen by the Church of Recollection, ascending rapidly to high authority within the guiding mind and spreading the influence of the church. This would prove to be the undoing of the people's empire as the extreme measures taken by the church during the ritual of recollection, the wearing of crowns made of anima rose, to better link the clergy and the collective unconscious, would inadvertently transform the ritual into a blood magic spell and tear the borders of the prime material plane and the abyss apart, allowing an army of demons to burn the people's empire to ash. Architect society was pre predicated on the many being able to ascertain the best course of action. As a result, the governing body of philosopher laws and the guiding minds was formed to both govern the provinces, counties and holdings within the empire's boundaries and to conduct the business of running the empire. Any guiding mind could be challenged for the seat, but the challenge had to be approved by the whatever and all outcomes were ratified by the same body. So the last thing for today, well, not the last thing, but almost the last thing, so, uh, important dates. 334, prediction, omen, or prophecy related to holy civilization in general. Yeah, I think we can 
get rid of that. So, someone in power has a vision of the end of the age with a multicolored fire surrounding by sign, surrounded by signs holy to Idion and Notrix burning the empire to the ground. As a result, overtly religious people are dissuaded from pursuing political power. So this would be the ritual of recollection going wrong, essentially. This is commonly believed to be a prophecy regarding ritual of recollection and its tragic end. At 590, the discovery of the animal rose, Cyborea spina, by Albertus Mendel. A plant which, when imbibed as the tea, links a person to the collective unconscious, or when held, produces a mild psychic effect, and was used as part of the final ritual of the civilization. And then in 1026, the glorious people's revolution of recognition, or, or the Piskeaton problem, records of the time, uh, so as it was known in records of the time and official communications or the Piskeaton Uprising, as it is known later. Piskeaton uh, was a middling province famed for fish production and mangrove wood, uh, which rose up against architects' forces as a result. of Ooh. Uh, do you mean here Dinosaur? war so approved by the order of the guiding hand That, that's cool. I like it. Thank you. Double thumbs up. Uh, so I still need a cause for the uprising. Taxation and re underrepresentation are obviously <laughs> are the obvious ones, as they have, um, you know. <laughs> inspired many actual popular um, uprising, notable things such as the American War of Independence, uh, but which was as a result of something prevented food uh, and prevented food from reaching the capital. Uh, the actions of this province inspired a nine-year rebellion and move calculated to gain more power in society for... Provinces and lords slash uh, nobles, gender neutral, uh, for the provinces and nobles uh, in the middle and outlying regions of the empire. Where, where was it? Where was it? There we go. Philosopher Nobles. So I think the last thing we need is a reason for the uprising. As I say, the obvious one is taxation or lack of representation. Well, I suppose more accurately it's... Um, we need the spark that ignited the rebellion. Hmm. I don't think there's a table for this. But there is a table for something similar. Uh, re rebellion, revolution, and overthrow. Yeah, it doesn't have a table in it, but there is... Hmm. 
So what if it's a religious split? What if the Piskeaton province has a extremely charismatic teacher who is promoting ideas which go against accepted orthodoxy? What are the gods? We're going with that. That's way better than my idea. Uh, as a result of famine and high grain taxes, and, and then in brackets, with rumoured church backing, prevented food from reaching the capital. Because they they would have to import grain if they're primarily fishers, and you know, mangroves. So it's swampy area. It's not ideal for growing of cereals. So Dan's welcome to my rescue again. Well, really, that's all I wanted to do today. Um, or change the safety and drive. So next time I revisit this stream. We'll be tackling the Holy, which is a civilization which arose in response to this with um, an emphasis on religious extremism to, to not try to summon demons, which ironically is destroyed when m more demons are summoned. Um, and again, this was all randomly generated. So the first one was demonic incursion. The second one was also demonic incursion. Uh, play, oh, sorry, it was planar incursion. And I rolled randomly and got the plane of war, where the god, where orcs, go, as you can see, orcs, goblins, devils, and demons are just engaged in constant war, and they come through uh, through a tear and etc. But I'm happy with what has been done today. Thank you to everyone who has watched this, who has had me on the background to to. And everyone who has spoken in chat, um, do appreciate it. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please do swing by twitch.tv slash comrade bubbles. I um, hope, hope that you can make it live. Uh, if you are um, not subscribed to that channel, please consider clicking the subscribe button to, to, to find more of my videos when I make them available. Um, I'm glad it was fun, Dinos War. That is always the intent. I love collaborative creation um, because I know that my ideas tend towards like a certain... Ow. Uh, tend towards a certain you know, train of thought um, based on my, what I like. So I like having other people's opinions. I think I've got a splinter. Hmm. Anyway, uh, so thank you uh, again. And... Um, I probably won't be streaming tomorrow, but I'll be back on Wednesday with Hollow Knight, Thursday with Dragon Age, and then Friday with more Armello, uh, at least for another week, because it was good fun, and I want to unlock the stuff that I should have unlocked, but because I was playing offline, I couldn't. So if any of that sounds interesting, YouTube, please do swing by. Um, see you.